Hi everyone and welcome to IDC and to this year's ethics panel. I'm Alyssa Antel from the School of Interactive Art and Technology at Simon Fraser University in Canada. The first question is what do children gain from benefiting in research and what constitutes evidence of benefit? So first I think it's really important to say that we can't always tell what different children will take away. Different children take away different things. But what we can hope for, independent of whether our research is a success or not, is that children will be exposed to opportunities to be involved in the process of developing new technologies, working in a research study, and being engaged with researchers from a university environment. And we hope that that will be a positive learning opportunity, as well as give them a sense of agency and the ability to have impact in some small area of the world which is outside of possibly their everyday experience. I think the only way to be sure that there's benefit is actually to gather data as part of your study to assess this, even if it's not the focus of your study. So gathering data, but keeping in mind that we need to do this in a safe environment where children can give both positive and negative feedback always the idea that if the study didn't work, the technology didn't work, the task didn't work, that children have helped us in some way and that that's normal and that's actually what we're looking for. I also think that it's really important to understand that there are often can be incidental or unexpected harmful events, um, things we may not ever have foreseen and we needed to really identify and mitigate those actively with children, with their caregivers, as they're happening. And it could be as simple as a technology failing for a child in a group of peers where that child has low self-esteem, maybe they have difficulty with their peers, and all of a sudden they feel stigmatized. So we need to um, intervene in that case with um, either in that moment or if we're not aware of it with the teacher talking about that and maybe highlighting what a great job that child did in breaking our technology for us. Um, Last, I think that it's really important that we do spend a lot of time checking in with the kids, checking in with their teachers or caregivers around benefits and risks from the planning stages all the way through until we've wrapped up the study and maybe even beyond that. The second question is how do we explain to children what research is and what their role will be? And this can be quite difficult. And in particular, I have faced this challenge when I'm working with children in populations that are not technologically literate, not yet scientifically literate, possibly don't speak English. So what we try to do in the language they understand is use very, very simple language and make analogies to their everyday life. For example, we say, might say we're trying to create a tool um, for them to use and that's not very easy. So we're using problem solving like when we do puzzles and because the children is for or because the tool is for children like them, we're wondering if they can help check if we've got it right. And so we might use uh, examples that are independent of the technology to start and then show the children what they'll actually do with technology in the study. And I've often done this by using an older child um, who may know them from the school and that helps reduce the power differential and they can see what their role will be. So we show them. And I also think it's really important to work with teachers and caregivers ahead of time to work out the ascent process since these people have a far better sense of what the children may or may not understand. So overall, I think that we are ethically obligated to try and understand the benefits and the risks as best we can and to think really carefully about how we're gonna make that information accessible to the children in the ascent process. The last question, which is what happens when our research ends, is um, I think that we should already have thought about that, that we have an obligation to make a plan for when our research ends about how we will know if there is going to be ongoing benefit, there might be ongoing benefit to that community or other communities beyond the end of the study, and if so, how we might continue to work with that community and related populations. So I think this discussion needs to happen with key stakeholders from the children's community before, during, and after, um, not something you think about right near the end. So this can be really challenging. I'm not saying this is easy. It's particularly difficult in 
places where, in studies where technology changes rapidly, where the availability of funding might change over time, where administrators change at research sites, where your job position might change, and when we work with communities that are not close by, that are not local to, to us, it can be very difficult, but we still have to do it. Um, in my own work, I know that I found there has been a lack of institutional support to make research systems accessible into a broader community. So academe is really good at distributing um, knowledge, but not objects, not technologies. But despite this, I think we have an obligation to at least explore the possibilities for knowledge translation beyond giving reports back to our communities beyond publishing journal papers. I think we need to be actively involved in trying to get beneficial technologies into children's hands, that we have a responsibility to think about this process and to try our best to make this process happen, given that it's very difficult. Thank you.